Today I'm gonna show you some crusty, dusty, ugly makeup. <laughs> That's kind of the point of today's video. I hope you guys will enjoy that. I don't really do project panning anymore. If you don't know what that is, project panning is when you like try to set goals and use up your makeup, make progress, and it's really satisfying for sure. And I used to make a lot of videos like that. I would like show, you know, my lipstick whittling down or my eyeshadow not have pan and all of a sudden have pan. I'm realizing this is gonna take me into telling you this long story of like why I don't project pan anymore, but overall it's just not right for me anymore. I was getting a little obsessive. I was making makeup not fun for me. But that all being said, I thought it'd be fun to show you guys some of the products that I have a dent in or that you can see the actual use in. Don't get me wrong, I love an aesthetic product. I love when a product has a beautiful embossing in it, when it looks pristine. Oh, and I am like on Instagram a little bit more. If you guys don't follow me, go follow me. I'm like trying, I'm trying the Instagram thing. I have not felt that spark in a long time. So I understand like the aesthetics, especially when it comes to creating videos and things like that but I thought it'd be fun just to show you the things that you can tell I've actually used that aren't pristine that aren't you know used once or twice and I hope that it inspires you to like get in there use your makeup and you know I don't know I thought it'd be fun also this stuff isn't in my empties I feel like empties are a great way to showcase what you've actually gone through whether you liked it whether you would repurchase it and all of that but there are a lot of products like a highlighter like we don't got five years we don't have five years, you know what I mean? Like, you're not gonna see that in an empties video for a very, very, very long time. And so this is kind of the in-between of these products where they're used and I'm definitely enjoying them and I thought I would show you them. So I have some makeup, I have a few other beauty items, so I hope you guys will enjoy. Let's just get into it. It's just like fun, I hope you, I don't know, I thought it'd be a fun idea. I did have a specific product that kind of inspired this video, but it's also inspired by a fragrance tag. If you guys don't know, I have a fragrance channel, check it out. Anyway, I'm like over here <laughs> plugging everything, but but there's a tag called show me your dent which is showing your perfumes that have a lot of use out of them and it was created by yummy 411 she hasn't posted in a while but that was definitely an inspiration for this video like the perfume side and I thought I'd apply it to makeup and then this eyeshadow from Bobbi Brown so this is the opal moonstone eyeshadow I want to say that this is in the permanent range but the packaging I have is limited edition because I bought this from a set I think it came out early 2021 so I've had this a little bit I've actually had a wild ride of enjoying this slash not enjoying this product when I first got it I was actually a little disappointed I want to say that was right when I was starting to get into neutrals and I guess maybe not the most sparkly of eyeshadows I love a sparkly eyeshadow this one is still sparkly though I don't know <laughs> when I think of it now I'm like it is so sparkly and so beautiful and so luxe and pretty but I thought it was like a little bit mm, subdued <laughs> at the time when I got it but I kept it around and since then this is one of my single shadows I go to all of the time it's hard for me to make a dent in eyeshadow eyeshadow because mm, I would say eyeshadow is my one true love and then highlighter is a close second like those are my two and then blush <laughs> yeah and then maybe lip liner I got a lot of makeup loves okay but this shadow used to have like a really nice uh, embossing or pressing on it and now this looks like it would be in one of my friends makeup bags you know what I mean where it has like a lot of use out of it I feel like you can't tell that it was pristine you can tell this is used sometimes when I look at my mom's makeup bag you know it's just used it's lived in it's like go-to items and I feel like this is on its way to looking like that and with a collection the size that I have and with you know reviewing makeup it's not always easy to do that so I was like wow this actually is getting so much use and I turn to it so much yes I'm not like about to hit pan on it or anything but definitely a lot of use in this one so I want to shout it out and I feel like when it comes to using makeup again it's kind of this like push and pull there's a part of me that gets so sad when I see the embossings go but I also really am satisfied and obviously so excited to be using and loving the makeup that I purchased Actually, I do have another item from that same Bobbi Brown collection. So this was, I don't know what it, what this collection actually was, but this is a duo powder and this is what it looks like. Another one that's looking pretty worn. I mean, there is like stuff all on the outside. My brushes have been in here. They have been loving this powder. There is like a, a glowy blush this is what I guess I'd call it. And then there is a highlighter in here. The highlighter is called Peach Glow and I, <laughs> I love a Bobbi Brown product. So I brought the other highlighting powders I have. This is my most recent one, the Quartz Glow. This one's really beautiful. It has like a soft golden hue. So it's not too warm. It's not too yellow, but it's not completely icy. So it has a little bit of that warmth if you don't want something too cool toned. This is my most recent one. And you can already see the wear in this one. Like this one makes me so proud because you can see on the outsides where the brush hasn't been. And you can see where I continuously dip the brush in. Loved seeing that. And then my oldest highlighting powder is the Pink Glow, which has like the most wear out of all of these in it. I mean, you can start seeing the swirls in this one. It, I'm 
like maybe this one is closer to potentially hitting pan. Like I love these powders so much and I'm so happy to get so much use out of them. And they look again, so pretty with the embossing. Like when they're brand new, they look so beautiful. But these are also a powder where it still looks so pretty even being used. Like this is a little dirty, like we could clean it up a bit, but the actual powder itself, like the shimmer in it and all that looks so good as well. So I love seeing use on my Bobbi Brown products. I really do. I can't wait. I feel like my quad I just bought this year for uh, Lunar New Year is definitely gonna have like that type of wear on it by the end of the year. Okay, another kind of inspiration for this video. I am so excited to say, and I know some of you guys already know, but I hit pan on the cream bronzer that came out last year from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzer. And I have the shade Fair. I've been using it since I got it. I got it right at launch or really close. Yeah, right at launch last year. And I hit pan on it. It's so exciting. I was going back between this. I have another bronzer actually to talk about and then the NARS one. And I feel like this is a lot of product. I know this product isn't cheap, but I was using this so much and it's kind of hard. Let me... I'm trying to clean it off, shine up that little pan in there. It's like my fingers are just disgusting right now. Okay, that helped a tiny bit, but it's a decent amount of pan. It's almost the size of my brush at this point, and it's just super exciting, again, to see that wear. Definitely a product I really enjoy. This one gives me a nice, in between bronzer slash contour, this is the fair shade, but it has a little bit of an olive undertone, I feel like, and it also gives me a little bit more sculpt than some of the other bronzers I have that turn a little bit warmer. The other bronzer I have in here is from Persona. This is the shade Dune in the bronze multi-stick and you can see in there and I'll show you a close-up of it but it is pretty far down in there and when I roll it up it takes a while to get it out but it doesn't have too much product left. This one for me is definitely a like a summer bronzer because it can go a little bit warm on me. So I really love this like in the middle of summer. It is such a creamy bronzer. It really does just glide on. It blends out really well. I also, because it's a little bit darker, like it blends out so nice though. It just has quite a bit of warmth. So when I'm too pale, you can really see that. But when I have that tan, I have that glow for summer, it looks so great. And then I also try to just make sure I don't don't get it in my hair but that's like any bronzer I'm realizing now that my hair is back to blonde like <laughs> foundation, bronzer. You gotta be careful with your roots <laughs> so you're not just like putting product all in your hair, but really love, love that one for the summertime. For some powder bronzers, I also have some pretty good wear in a couple of them. This one is from Hadija Schmidt. I believe that's how you say it. And she's a brand, she's a German influencer, I believe. And this had a whole beautiful embossing on it, but I just wore the heck out of this last summer. This is just like the type of bronzer that I really like, that kind of baked formula that is semi-sheer and also has a little bit of a sheen to it. Nothing too glowy. I don't want it to be like a highlighter formula necessarily, but I like something that gives a little dimension, you know, isn't completely flat matte. I think that looks so great, so skin-like. And again, for summer, it's just so beautiful, effortless. And I feel like you can get away with a little less makeup. Like I... <laughs> I mean, you can get away with a little less makeup anytime you want. You don't have to wear makeup. You can do whatever you want, girl. But I'm just saying, I just love that type of a bronzer product with a big fluffy brush just kind of everywhere. It looks so freaking good. And this one definitely got a ton of use. I'm like surprised how used this looks, but I really was going for it with that one. <laughs> okay, this one, it kind of goes against the whole idea of this video in some ways because I've hit pan on the Jones Road bronzer. Now I made a get ready with me video and I hit pan in that little short I was making. So if you haven't seen that short, you can go check it out. But this I hit pan on yes I've been using it yes I've really been enjoying it but it's also because this only has 5.7 grams in it which is not a lot of product so a little disappointing that I hit pan on it so fast it feels good in some ways like damn like I love this shit like it's fun in some ways but also when you think about like value and product like you don't want to run through product too fast like uh, <laughs> like when you buy it you want to have it also <laughs> But I did hit pan on this. I do have quite a bit of wear on this. And I was using it with the brush that it came with too. So I wasn't even using some like really stiff brush. I was picking up tons of product. I'm like, I'm using the bronzer brush, <laughs> like the actual Jones Red bronzer brush. So yeah, if you pick this up, it definitely doesn't have a lot of product, but it is pretty. I do enjoy it nonetheless. Oh my gosh, there's something in my eye and it's scratching and hurting. Oh my gosh, I got it. You know, sometimes you do that and you literally cannot find what is causing the issue and the havoc. I literally was like, oh my gosh, I see exactly what it is, took care of the problem. 
that never happens. I'm living in a movie over here. <laughs> All right, back to the video. I have a few foundations here. I wanted to show my Salt New York Sneaky Balm. This is my second one. So I've already used up a full one of these and now I have a second one. Just to let you guys know, I'm just putting this currently in a Mob Beauty uh, cream blush packaging. It fits pretty well in these. These are $5. So I'll leave it linked down below. I had a few, I feel like every time I show it, people ask. So I thought I would just mention it in the video, but I've already hit pan on my second one. And this is a product I just go back to. I mean, you can hit pan on these pretty easily, but I don't mind it. It's a cream product. I feel like they're relatively affordable overall. There's always like a deal going on. Buy so many, you know, save some money over there. And it's just such an easy foundation, like base product for me to use that I kind of go in spurts with this. I'll use it like a ton and then kind of put it away, try some other things and then come back to it. Whenever I come back to it, I'm like, oh, so good. This is one of those like cream products that goes on really nice on my skin, doesn't leave uh, any dry patches, which is something I really like because I definitely have those areas and this always just looks really smooth. It is glowy and I definitely need to powder throughout the day. So it's not the best at like oil control, but I really do love it. Obviously I've like repurchased it. I'm hitting pan again. The other foundation you guys already know. Okay, Yensa BC foundation. I feel like I just opened this. <laughs> I feel like I just opened this one, but I already, obviously you can see how skinny this guy is, you know, <laughs> it's being used a ton. This was my go-to foundation. I'm definitely trying out a lot more foundations this year, but I have gone through, I don't even know at this point, like six of these, five of these, six of these, like a lot of this foundation. It's so good. I really want to try the serum one that came out. That's on my list. Maybe I should try that next, but yeah, love this foundation. Definitely some good wear on that. Kind of continuing on into some base products. This is the color corrector from Sigma. I love this. I really, really love this. I think this is a really great release from Sigma. This is the shade light to medium and I have pan in both of them. There's like a darker peachy tone and then like a lighter peachy tone. And I find both of these work really well for me to correct any darkness under my eye. A lot of the time when I'm just doing a super simple face. Maybe I'm on vacation or I'm traveling or I'm just at home and I don't want to do something too much, but I want to feel put together. I feel like this works so well as my concealer. So I'll just use this. I won't even add concealer on top. I also feel like it helps with any redness. So I'll use it as like an all over corrector as well. And not only on under my eyes. I also love the packaging. Like it just feels um, nice quality and like looks pretty. I mean, mine doesn't look very pretty because it's like dusty and crusty. I told you, I warned you at the literal beginning beginning of the video that it was going to be a dusty crusty video okay on par with an empties video <laughs> but yeah I really love this and I feel like I kind of moved away from using the Becca corrector and I feel like this is a less emollient version of that but it does a very similar thing so really love that I also have pan on my Glossier stretch concealer this is also a repurchase so I bought this again and when I repurchased this I was in love with this concealer I don't think I'm as in love with this as I used to be especially under my eyes because it is emollient it is very moisturizing very glow but a little bit thicker I feel like like it almost has a, a tackiness to it but it does look beautiful don't get me wrong especially if you have dry skin it might be one to check out for sure but I just found that it would just transfer my mascara so much and I just put up with it because it was such a pretty finish and I feel like we were at the peak of glow at the time and I was really into it so I don't know if this is like my favorite now I do like more of that satin I'm looking for a satin you know I want it to not be a flat matte <laughs> type of cover. I don't want that, but I also, you know, I do have oily skin. I do have big pores and a little bit of mattifying like at a satin finish really helps give me a, a smooth finish that looks really, really nice. So anyway, I definitely want to finish this up at some point, but I don't know if it's one that I would repurchase. Last for like complexion, I'm going to put in my Kosas. I know you've seen this. <laughs> this is the cloud set powder. This is a very popular powder and I do like this. It gives a little bit of coverage and it really does give it's almost like a weird moisturizing powder to me. <laughs> like when I put it on, it almost gives my face like a plumpness. I don't know how to explain it, um, but it mattifies as well. I don't feel like it keeps me matte for a super long time, but it is a nice powder. It is really, really nice, but it also gets hard pan. And <laughs> this is what it looks like. Oh, also as you can tell, <laughs> this is not how the packaging normally goes. It fell in my sink and this shattered off. But yeah, definitely some use. This is like a domed baked powder. So no longer a dome. It's starting to become concave. It's looking again, dusty, crusty, and musty. That's one I'm not sure if I'm gonna repurchase. Like I have enjoyed it so much, but I hate that it has the hard pan. So I'll probably try out quite a few other powders, see if there's something else out there. I really wanna try the Charlotte Tilbury one. That one's a very popular one. If you have any recommendations, let me know down below. But yeah, I, I definitely am getting a little more into the powders. I, I went away. I wasn't even powdering my face for a while. 
But we also weren't leaving our houses a ton at that point too. Okay, anyway, continuing. I have another Persona product here. This is actually the E-Balm and I have it in the shade Meditate. I also have the red one too. I have used so much of this balm and I have a lot of lip products and I feel like I'm really coming into lip products more and more actually. And I'm just like, I, I didn't even realize how much product I had used of this. So that makes me so excited. This is a hydrating balm with a little bit of a tint on it. Just so easy, so simple to wear, you know, like my lips with better type of color on me. So love that thing. I do have a few more eyeshadows to talk about. These are from ColourPop. These are the Super Shocks and these can be relatively easy to hit pan on, but you also have to want it a little bit. Like you actually have to wear them. So the two shades I have here, one is I think limited edition and not available anymore. So I decided to bring the other shade that's like comparable. Like if you wanted Cosmic Charge, which is, <gasps> you guys, it's on, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with that in a second. This was Cosmic Charge, now nothing in here. But I think I can save it and just smush it back in. But Cosmic Charge is really beautiful. It's like a cool toned, like silvery blue shimmers, like, oh, just elevated neutrals. I have a few videos on it, so check that out. But if you want one that is more, I think, permanent, a little quirky, is beautiful. This one has a little bit more of a warm base on it. But again, it has those like silvery, cool toned sparkles. Again, those kind of like blue tones kind of coming in here. A little bit of like something extra, like not just a neutral, very sparkly, very beautiful as a one shadow look. Definitely one to pick up and it's super affordable. It's one of the best ColourPop Super Shocks, seriously. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe that just fell out of the pan, seriously. Another lip product, this is a weird one. This is such a weird one. I'm like basically halfway done with this, but this is from Winky Lux. I think I got this in a FabFitFun box. So again, all of this is random. I feel like Winky Lux, what? But this is actually a really cute product. So it has these little stars in it and also some gold like shimmer in it. And it's a clear gloss but this is like a balmy gloss. It's very plush, very nourishing, very like smooth feeling. It's like thick without being sticky. It's just, it's actually really nice. So I've used quite a bit of it. I love using this with like a lip liner and I've used, yeah, about half of it. Such an odd product, but I really, I actually really like that one. The last lip product, I thought I would show you one of the lip liners that I already am using quite a bit of and I'm surprised because I repurchased this, I feel like what was recently, because I've already gone through a full one of these, but this is the Spice Lip Liner from Jane Iredell. And you might not think that it's that used, but this is the Moira Lip Liner <laughs> that I just more recently got. And you can see definitely being sharpened down. And again, I feel like I just got Spice. I really enjoy the Jane Iredell Lip Liners. It's just a great formula. I would use it in my kit as well. So that's how I discovered it. But Spice is great. Nutmeg is great. If you want something pinky, Rose is a really good one. Um, they have one called like Earth Red. That's pretty nice. Nice. Like there are a lot of great colors. So love spice though. That's definitely my favorite It just has the right amount of like a mauve to it, but it's not too cool toned. So really good I feel like I'm on a timer. I don't know why sorry if it feels like I'm going fast But I think this is like one of the last makeup items. I'm going to talk about but the Sigma uh, Shadow sticks I love I would say sorbet is my true one true love I also do like I think it's called persuade which is more of like a painterly type color like Mac painterly paint pot It's kind of like that but sorbet. I'm gonna show you I'm rolling it up. This is bringing me back to my project panning days a little bit, but I would have like a piece of paper I would like write down marks on. That's all I have left, right? That's it. Not too much. Not too much at all. And this is a relatively new one. I have used this a few times, but it's basically full and it, it just keeps going. <laughs> It just keeps going. The proof's in the pudding here, okay? The proof of how much I love this. You can see the difference. <laughs> I really like Sorbet specifically because it's a nice like rosy tone. It has this really subtle sheen to it. It's, it's definitely a satin type of shade and I love that. It's perfect for an eye base. I love wearing it alone, but I also think it works under like basically any look I'm gonna do, especially if it's gonna be neutral. It just gives me a little bit of something going on and then I just build off of that and I love it. I love that one so much. Oh, this this product, I forgot to mention. Okay, the V Lighter from Valentino. This is I, what feels like it. Like when I think of products in my collection, this feels like a relatively new love, but I'm already halfway done with this. I'm already halfway done. This is such a great, I know it's luxury, I know it's high end, and I'm almost like with some luxury stuff, like is it actually good or is it just like a flex? Like is it just expensive, you know? But I'm telling you, this is so good. This is a shimmery primer, but the shimmer in it isn't like sparkly. It's not like little particles. It's very even, again, kind of almost like a, a satiny sheen on your skin. And it also feels like a satin too, because this gives you almost 
this matte sheen. So it doesn't give you that glowy tacky look or sweaty look. It really does look almost like an airbrushed, I feel like, sheen to it, if that makes sense. It comes in two colors. I have the rosa one, but it also has like a golden, more like tan type of color. It's just so good. I believe there is a 100 point perk. One of you guys let me know at Sephora right now. So hopefully that's still going on if you're gonna make an order. I don't think you should make an order necessarily just to get the sample of this primer. But if you were gonna make the order, it might be a good one to pick up with some of your points uh, just to see if you like it because that's how I was introduced to it was through a sample and it was like love at first sight. Okay. Definitely one I would repurchase and I can't believe I've used so much of it already. Like this feels like a new product. I'm like, damn, <laughs> damn, not that new, obviously. All right, I have three non like makeup makeup items I just wanted to mention. This one makes me so sad. This is about to be in an empties, but this is the way leave-in conditioner, but this is the collab with Byredo. That's the Mojave Ghost scent. I loved this. This is how I was like introduced to Byredo kind of in the first place. That feels like so long ago at this point. I was like living in a different place. Oh, weird, weird, weird. Oh my gosh. This just smells like getting out of the shower to me at this point because I've used it for like two years straight. Uh, I made sure to buy a backup bottle, but this is almost gone. This collaboration is no longer a thing. Like I can't really buy this. So I'm going to be so sad, but I love this leave-in conditioner. Good memories, man. Good memories. Love that thing. Okay. The next two things, if you love talking about body scrubs and body washes and fragrance in general, again, go subscribe to my fragrance channel because that's what we do over there. It's like all perfume, all scent candles like just that type of stuff but I have a scrub here and I'm hoping to soon do the scrub video I know I know I keep saying it but it's coming but this tree hut scrub in cotton candy if you can get this flavor I know that it seems like cotton candy is gonna be like the most sickeningly sweet juvenile scent and I was kind of down for that <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I'm down if that's what it is. But this one is not, this cotton candy scent is not that at all. It's kind of showery, but it's not nearly as sweet as you would expect it to be. It's not as pungent or like anything like that. Like you would think it actually just smells delicious and good in a way that's not even quite edible. Like I, I don't know if I smelled this smell, if I would know it's cotton candy. I, I don't think I would guess, oh, that's a cotton candy smell, uh, which I feel like, you know, when a cotton candy smell is a cotton candy smell, you know it, <laughs> you know what it is. There's something refined about this cotton candy smell, if that's possible. I don't know how they did it, and I definitely didn't expect Tree Hut of all brands to do it, but it's so good. There's a little bit of like a, a shimmer running through this, and I love this scrub. I definitely will be repurchasing that one. And last for this, I wanted to show, which I just like effed it up, but this is like around here. It's not quite halfway done. Sorry for my crusty little tea. J Max tag on the side, but this is the Philosophy Crispy Marshmallow Bars Body Wash. I think these technically can be like a million things like body wash, bubble bath, hair, shampoo, like you could do whatever you want with them. Yeah, shampoo, shower gel, and bubble bath. Okay, no, not hair stuff. But this smells so good. And I really think that if you're at Marshalls or TJ Maxx, wherever they have these, I feel like that's definitely the best place to get these scents. But Philosophy comes out with a lot of different like gourmand and like sweet scents and fun scents. So don't sleep on these if you're going to TJ Maxx. Specifically though, Crispy Marshmallow Bars, it's just like a yummy vanilla scent. It's so good. I don't feel like these suds up the most. I use like a silicone nubby matte currently to lather up my body washes. So maybe if I use something else, I'd get a little bit more of a, you know, a lather, but still so great. Really, really love it. And those are some products that I have dents in. Those are some products that I have some use in. They're not used up, but some of them are well on their way to getting used up or just have a lot of use out of it, especially when I think of my collection and it feels good. They feel broken in. They feel used in a good way, a positive used. And I thought I would just share them with you. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for being here and I'm going to leave it there. Bye.